Looks like I went shopping at the Walmart toy department, don't it? <laughs> no, actually this is a rifle and this thing's an FNPS 90 and I'm going to strip this thing apart with just a bare minimum of tools in less than three minutes. Hi, my name is Jim Green and I'm a gunsmith. The name of my shop is Gunworks in the town of Harrington, Maine. Today's rifle is an FNPS 90. These rifles were originally developed by Fabric National around 1990 so pilots and other personnel could replace their sidearms of 9mm. These things later on became pretty popular as a personal defense weapon. So let's get ready to start stripping this thing down for a good cleaning. We're going to do it with a minimum of tools. All right. Now, before you take apart any firearm, the very first thing you want to do is make sure that the magazine is removed, that the chamber is empty, and the uh, firearm is not loaded. Last thing you need to do is have an accidental discharge. So with the PS90, what we're going to do, <clears throat> reach up here, pull back on the magazine catch, lift the magazine up, and straight back. That's a 50 round magazine right there. 5.7 by 28 millimeters the caliber. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to open it up, look down inside the chamber, make sure there's nothing inside. Release that, leaving the hammer cocked. That's important. See the little square button up here? Give that a little push, grab the top optics rail, pull that off and forward. There's your entire barrel and optics rail assembly. We'll put this off to the side. Okay, moving along. Tip the foot firearm up and just let the bolt and recoil assembly just slide forward. Set that off to the side. Coming back here to the back, you'll see the butt plate. It's T-slotted into the stock. Simply grab it, lift straight up, set that off to the side. You'll notice inside down here the trigger pack. There's a little lever right here. Simply pull up on the lever and remove your trigger pack. Okay. Now if you want to ever get down inside here and clean all this out, don't disassemble anything in here. Just simply put your thumb over the hammer, pull back on the disconnector, okay, let that ride forward a little bit, and then push this down right here and release it all the way up. Now your hammer is off and you can get down inside everything here with Q-tips, compressed air, a little bit of gun oil. But before you got to put this back together, as soon as you're done cleaning it, I recommend the first thing you do is cock the hammer back into place. Now you set this off to the side. Now you don't even need tools to get to this basic field strip right here. Right? All of that in less than a minute if you really practice with it. However, sometimes, depending on the environment, you can get a little bit of dust, trash, and crud up inside your trigger pocket. This is where you're going to need your minimum of tools. Now, let me get my flashlight out so you can see what I'm going to show you. You look up inside right there, you see these two little metal rods, okay? What that simply is, is your trigger rod bar going from the trigger down both sides. That's what pushes back on your uh, sear and disconnector. So what we're going to do, if you look in through the top of the magazine opening right here, I'm going to reach inside with my finger and find that first rod. And we're going to very carefully pull that up and out of the slot. Do the second one the same way, up and out of the slot. Now, since these are nylon plastic parts, you don't want to damage them, so be very careful doing this. Gently pry up on one side with a small screwdriver to pop that loose. Lift this up and remove it. See the shape here? This is how this is going to go back in. Try to refrain from squeezing this thing and bending it. You don't want to damage this. Now, moving back to removing the trigger. What you want to do is make sure that the weapon is on fire because the safety is right down here in the trigger well. Okay. I like to pull back on the trigger to hold it in place. And you see this little center support piece? With your finger, push that forward until you hear a click. Now, with your other minimum tool, very carefully grab right here and lift this straight up. 
pull forward again on the trigger, tip it up and out. Now you can get all the dirt and the trash and the crud that's in here, Q-tip that out. And the same thing with the little trigger pocket as well. Get all that cleaned out right there. Minimum of tools. Uh, if you're out in the field and you're kind of in a hurry, you don't want to pack a bunch of tools with you, but if you're like me, well, here's a nice little handy tool to have. There's your pliers. There's your screwdriver tip. Real handy for taking these guns apart. So let's uh, put this rifle back together. Now you'll notice down inside here, you can see there's a slot. Inside that slot is where this part of your trigger is going to ride in. So, holding the firearm like this, put your trigger back in, rotate that down. Slide that back. I like to hold the trigger, making sure this little locking piece right here is all the way forward. Push that down, and then take your finger and push it back till you hear it click and lock into place. Because what you're wanting to do is line this slot up right here. Just like that. See it? Now you take your uh, trigger bar piece. You remember how these little Remember how this goes? Slide this back into place. It goes back into this slot right here. Push it until it clicks. Well, that thing just pretty much slid into place there, didn't it? But like I said, if these are sticking up, all you got to do is just push them back into place using your finger here in the back. All right. Now once your trigger bar assembly is back in, remember, make sure your hammer's cocked back before you put the trigger pack in. Lift up on the uh, trigger pack or the hammer pack latch. Lift up on it, push the hammer pack and fire control grip back into place, flip that down. Now your butt plate goes right back into the T slot. Now your bolt and your recoil springs and stuff, there's no way this can go in incorrectly. It won't go in upside down. All right? but just keep in mind this little roller does go to the left. You just simply set it right here, push it back until it seats into place. Now the last part, you set your barrel up like this on the top, push back, push down on this square, Lock it into place. Check the safety. And your magazine. I'm not going to load live rounds into a magazine on the video because of the safety sallies. But if you hold your magazine like this, you take your little projectiles or your, uh, your ammunition with your projectile facing forward this way, you see a little slot right here that it goes in. It's a little bit wider at the top than it is down here at the bottom. You see these little uh, little T section right there. You just simply take your cartridges, push them in right here, slide them back. Push them in, slide them back. The magazine will automatically turn the cartridges sideways and feed them up into the magazine. You're ready to load it up and you're ready to fire. Pretty simple. Take your magazine, slide it in forward, lock it in place. Now I'd be ready to fire if we had any ammo in it. That's an FNPS 90, 5.7 by 28. Nice little close in personal defense weapon. Now, this is the civilian legal version with, this, with the longer barrel right here. Now, if for some reason you ever have to change the barrel, or if you ever get an SBR stamp and want to change the barrel yourself, you could either take it to a gunsmith or very simply, if you're handy with tools, you can do it yourself. Once again, we'll remove the magazine, push down on the squares, remove this barrel assembly. Okay, now, the way to get this thing apart is pretty darn simple. There's a blind pin right here. See it? Notice it doesn't come out the other side. You probably take something like a, I don't know, like a number 43 drill bit. You can drill that out. 
once you have it drilled out, go over to a bench vise, use a rag, use a lead shim, soft jaw, clamp this flash hider, barrel extension, into the vise once that pin's drilled out. You'll come back here, you'll notice there's a couple of lugs machined into the back of the barrel. Pretty darn simple. Put your wrench on there, and since this thing is left hand threaded, you'll turn it clockwise to break it loose. Once it's loose, this just simply slides off the front. Now your barrel itself is down inside here. There's three springs inside. One's going to be in the front. You've got these springs back here. All right. Unless you want to argue and fight with these long stringy springs here, the best way to remove your barrel is to take a wooden dowel rod about the same diameter as your barrel, start from the front, push it in, push the barrel from the front to the rear out the back. What that does, that dowel rod keeps all these springs in here nicely captivated. Okay, so when you go to put your other barrel back in, start at the back and you push the barrel back in from the rear to the front and push your dowel rod out. And you just simply slide another flash hider back on and drive another pin down in that blind hole after you get everything tightened back up. Pretty darn simple. Remember that since this thing is left-handed thread, Used to be righty tighty lefty loosey, it's exactly opposite for removing the barrel and flash hider from these. Quick field strip, timed event? Okay. That's it. These are really nice little carbines, real nice personal defense weapons, very simple to operate, very simple to maintain. That's it. I like them. Thanks for watching this latest video. Down East Gunworks is now shifting towards building custom rifles. What you see in this video interests you, or if you have a special project in mind, contact the shop through Jim at DowneastGunworks.com. And a special thanks to the folks that contributed to this project.